Let's kick it off with one of the hottest names in free agency with my boy Trey Burton. He's gotten a ton of hype right now. Bears are interested. Lots of people kicking the ideas around of, of where he may or may not land. I look at it this way. Um, we're always chasing this tight end position. Always. Guys, they're, they're like unicorns. You're, you're, you're trying to wrangle them, trying to get them on your team, <laughs> get those consistent points when really over the years there's only been a, a couple of guys who are mainstays at consistent tight end points. Um, and people are hoping and praying that Trey Burton is going to be one of those kind of guys. Maybe he goes to Chicago, like we just mentioned, and Nagy gets him, who's was you know with Kelsey, and maybe that's why he wants him that kind of athletic tight end. Oh, if you start talking Trey Burton and you want to talk about the guy that's been coaching Kelsey for a couple of years, that'll get your blood pumping. Oh, for sure. And this, the, I don't think there's another human being on planet Earth who was maybe more into riding the Trey Burton train of like, I don't under, can't understand why the Eagles don't give this guy more run. Well, finally, they gave him a little bit more run, and now he's burst onto the scene. I guess my biggest question is, is if you do have Trey Burton on your team right now, are you holding him or are you, are you trading him away? Because like I, like I said, this is one of the hardest positions to get consistent results from, and it's really only the same couple of guys every year. So do you want to ring the register on on Trey Burton, which I think actually I'm leaning towards that way. As much as I love this guy and have been ringing his bell for a while, I think I might be the the hype is the hype is hot. Right, right. Well, maybe maybe I might be the hype is pretty hot. Any form you look at, they're talking about him. The Twitters, the Roto Worlds. Uh, I went looking through in our 12 man dynasty that the three of us are in to see if he was on the uh, waiver wire or whatever. He's already on my team, so that's solid. Super pumped about that. Uh, if you're asking, you're welcome. I'm definitely gonna hold. <laughs> you're welcome. I'm welcome. Yeah. Hey, you're not the only one that likes Trey Burton. Uh, you don't. wouldn't even know who Trey Burton was if you weren't on this podcast. <laughs> I got some Zach. I got some Zach Ertz. Okay, I knew the backup <laughs> guy behind him was, and he showed well when Hertz Ertz got hurt and he played pretty good. Sure did. Jumped in there and showed in the red zone. Got his five touchdowns this year. He didn't blow it up from like like a total catches perspective for the whole year, but Zach Ertz was in there doing that thing. But I think the the big thing about like Trey Burton, like I I, I play we play a bunch of um, FFPC leagues around here. Like Casey said, it's hard to find a consistent tight end in any league format, but much less you get a one point five. The one point five helps it out a it little helps bit. It out. So when you get a tight end that's working, it works even better, and they're easy to start and to flex. And I have four out of my five leagues in the uh, FFPC that I, I have Burton, and I've. I'm torn on trying to just I've, – I've looked around in some of the trades and stuff you see for Burton. I saw somebody get two third rounders. I saw somebody get a second rounder, just a straight-up Trey Burton trade, not when he's a kicker. You could use him right now to b maybe be that guy that pushes a trade over the edge if you're trying to trade up for some really premium talent and you're trying to make a you know kind of a half-ass offer, if you will. Maybe Trey Burton is a nice little rider there on the back end of that thing to give you some credit. But for me, I think – Probably 100% of the time, Trey Burton was absolutely free. I don't know. If you bought him in the last month, he wasn't free. But most of the like, most likely, in every league I got him, I picked him up off the waivers this year. Sure. So there's nothing wrong with turning that into a second-round pick. Absolutely. I bark at Jay Wayne every year about doing that with some of his guys. But – Molder. But you if you know the free agency coming around, there's just such if he goes to Chicago and gets that narrative of right. oh well this is Travis Kelsey's coach, you know. I feel like right now is, you know, the last week of February as we're going to the last week of week of February here, I just feel like that might be a little early on the sale. Sure. It's still premium time to buy, maybe. And I, I for no. me, see I don't think you can buy right now. I think everyone's trying to prod around and send these garbage offers of being like, Well, maybe I can get Trey Burton for cheap before he goes somewhere. But that's no that, the, well, the cat's I said, out of the bag. You're right. I said that wrong. I said premium time. It's premium time to buy was when you picked him up for free. When you got him for an absolute one dollar on the on the fab budget. That was and I did that on a lot of my teams. I like you said, it's just so hard to find a tight end. I'm I'm a, I want to hold him a little bit longer and see sure. what happens, see where he goes, see if I can justify. I got one team where I really need him to just play for me, and I got another team where I got like four tight ends, and any of them could be sold at any time for major profit. And Trey Burton might be on that list. Yeah, I, th I think probably as soon as he lands somewhere would be, or I mean, it'll be he'll be very sellable all off season. Is I guess more yeah. how I should have stated it when I started, and and I would probably sell as the hype builds and yeah. he and he lands somewhere and there's the roto world blurb comes out and all of a sudden right you know that's kind of what happened just now why everyone's 
sorting through and see if they can pick them up for cheap. Well, that's not happening. The blurb already came out and there's right. going to be other summertime training camp blurbs where, oh, he looks so good and they want to feature Trey Burton. And yeah. then it's going to be like, all right, give me give me 110 yeah. and you can have Trey Burton or what, you know. Yes, but yeah, specifically speaking, you can definitely look for a late first round for a guy that's a, a tight end that's coming around and getting hot. I think it would be a good idea to not, you're not going to be, in a hurry to sell you shouldn't be yeah, in a hurry no, to sell. you're right like you said you got all off season to do this you got the mini camps you got the training camps and and preseason coming around and I, I think trey burton will continue to just rise in value which is basically what you just said so you have you have trey burton on on your team before we go on this last one it just are you are you gonna ride it out or are you just you're gonna try to ring the register well i'm you know jay wayne's a holder i'm the holder of all all my players uh i mean I'm, i want to see where he goes for sure I'm not. I'm not ringing a register before I find out where he goes. Um, but then, I mean, depending on the spot, I could be. I'd, I'd be down to to turn my waiver wire addition into a, a second round pick. I guess if I guess it's as solid as swing in the third round as you can get. So I'd probably hold for a third, and, and I'd probably move him for a second. But I'm excited to see where he goes. I think I'm not moving him for any less than a first. And that's not that's not a it's not a bad call. I mean, a second would be a nice, easy pickup right now. But that's what I'm saying. I think if you hold it a little longer, you'd be able to get better than that. And or you some can people, use it for a good kicker and a fantastic kicker. Exactly, in a trade. exactly. You can make you can make that three for one where you're going and getting somebody that's a first round startup pick. You know, and and some people are just they like just like you. It's been become very very popular lately to just punt on the quarterback situation, and some people punt on the tight end situation, and they pick up the Cameron Brates of the world and all that good stuff. But some people are like, I want to be one of the people that has a tight end because it's so hard yeah. to get one. And it is true if you find a tight end, like you know, if you picked up Kelsey a couple years ago or Zach Ertz came to life for you this year, if you have a tight end scoring points, it makes it a lot easier to win every week because yeah. most people, six out of twelve of your people in the league, are not going to be yeah. scoring points. Delaney Walker scored some points for you this year. It's very hard to find that tight end when you pay the premium for him and it works out right it's fantastic it's but it's all the times where you pay the the premium or maybe the next tier of kind of payment on a Mm -hmm. on a tight end and it doesn't work out that you're like damn it this is the worst i know and it's and what happens is if you get a spot like this this is a moment in time where in the next couple months trey burton goes to a team like Chicago, so you can do that narrative with Nagy. If he goes to a team that doesn't really have a ton of playmakers, so you can say, okay, well, they brought him in and paid him some decent money, and they're going to throw him the ball. If it doesn't work out, right, and you're sitting here in December, and he's caught 30 more passes this that year, this coming year, you're like, dang it, I could have sold and made yeah. some money, you know? Because I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure that he's good. I like his athletic pro, but I'm not. I don't know. I don't. I have no idea, really. Well, like, he looks know, good so. out there for Philadelphia. But in a small, you know, like right. with 30 catches, he hadn't looked good at 75 catches. Right. But threw a touchdown pass in the Super Bowl. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> sure. <laughs> true, true. All right, well, let's let's move through the rest of these free agent kind of ADP of some of the guys who are interesting. we got Deion Lewis coming into the February ADP of 97. Seems a little steep. I think we're trying to go with the, the cheap money uh, na- uh, theme here today. I, I probably wouldn't wouldn't classify that as too, too cheap of money. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out if, if we're kind of in or out on Deion Lewis here. He's ca- probably going to move on from the Patriots, the team that kind of made him here. Right, dug him out of the scrap heap. Um, started the season real, real slow with the Patriots this year. They had, obviously, the stable of backs. They weren't sure who was – they were trying to play that guessing game with the defense. All you know, and the Patriots play that guessing game well. Middle, it's basically the tale of three seasons when you look at his game log for the year. You got the first four or five games, he's hardly – doing anything, a couple of touches here, and you got the middle, like 6 through 12, you know, 13 carries a game, and then the last couple games of the season, they were just feeding him like a horse, and he was just out there doing work. So he came to life down the stretch, and that was kind of, they were just leaning on him. Maybe they were just trying to get to the playoffs and keep Tommy from getting hit, whatever the, the strategy there was for the Patriots. They always keep you guessing. But for me, uh, I mean, at a you know a sub two hundred pound back trying to go and and become uh, somebody's big free agency pickup I, I, inside of a top ten you know in the nineties and in an ADP I I can't invest a top ten draft pick in uh, you know in this guy. Well, the Patriots definitely saved him. I think at the beginning of the year they were working. They had a healthy Rex, and like you said, it wasn't a great production. Gillisley wasn't great production there. Sure. Or great usage at all, but then from week ten on, I mean, he was getting some solid all-around yardage totals and 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 looked really good. And part, he's catching plenty of balls 
I think he probably has like a bit of an injury stigma about him. But like looking at it, there's really only two major injuries. Like it was an ACL tear where he had reconstructive knee surgery, I think in 15. And then he had a knee sprain, which led to him having another ACL revision surgery. Just trying to repair that initial one, I guess. And then he stayed pretty much healthy all 17. And now he's finding himself a top 10 dynasty pick. I think that if Alex Collins is gone and Lamar Miller's already gone, then maybe I'm, I'm interested in him around this area. But then you still got other upside players with like Aaron Jones and Marlon Mack and Foreman all in the same area. I don't, you know, he's a free agent though. We don't know where he's going to go. Don't know what's going to happen in those other two backfields either. They're talking about maybe he goes to Detroit. I don't want to speculate on where he goes. That'd be terrible. Yeah, I don't but understand that at all. Why would I don't get the what excitement? Are you, what are you doing? Why yeah. would you bring in Deion Lewis? To, why do you need another guy like the guys you already got? Sure, uh, that's just they say the globe. Some dude from the Boston Globe says this might be a landing spot. That would be an absolute horrible landing spot. One, it'd be terrible for Deion Lewis. Two, more importantly for me, it'd be a horrible thing for the Lions. You already got Amir Abdullah that didn't get it done in this type of offense. You got Theoretic that catches balls and you know does his thing from time to time when he's the lone man standing on a week to week basis due to injuries to uh, the running backs. But like. I'm you just I mean you, you're right Jay Wayne don't take anything away from what Deion Lewis did on the field last year total yardage catches pounding the rock but the thing it's just one of those things like there's such a such a way about it the way the Patriots get you going like with those 20 something carries like I guarantee you if you went back and watched those games and paid attention to Deion Lewis like they're the Patriots will get in a no huddle offense when you get the wrong package on the field, and they'll run it five times in a row with Deion Lewis because they got running a bunch of against a bunch of cornerbacks. You yeah. know, you 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 mess around, bring your dime defense on the field to stop Brady, and they're going to just hand it to a guy that you don't expect getting the rock. That's how they keep you off balance so well. I'm not sure that there, there De- probably isn't a harder guy to bring down, regardless of who's on the field. Deion Lewis is one of the he hardest is. guys to bring down. 84 out evaded there. Like tackles on this he, stat here. Outrageous. He yeah. runs tough. I, I mentioned sub 200 pounds. I don't mean to pick on a little guy. I wish I could get to 195 pounds. I mean, like there's you nothing. Can't get your hands on this guy. No, he's he's a really really good running back. I'm you know, but you're you're talking about a guy that's going to turn 28 in December. And, I mean, in September, and you just it's hard to say to see that. You know, I guess it's hard to see that paying huge dividends for when you. When he changes teams, when yeah. you go to a different scheme, when you got Tom Brady, you just it's just different. You know, like if he's doing all that behind Andy Dalton, maybe it may, I don't yeah. care where he goes, but he's doing what he's doing with the Patriots. And we've seen a ton of guys leave the Patriots and not be any good. Yeah, well, I mean, you know? it, basically, he was very efficient with very. The, everything he did. He caught, you know. 32 or 36 balls that came his way on 180 carries. He had just four yards under 900 yards. So everything, Total he, yard, you yeah. know, everything he was doing was, was super efficient. And that's kind of the Patriots MO, not to say that he can't go somewhere else, but like if you have Deion Lewis on your team moving forward, like you picked him up for not much last year and he really helped you out this year, I would be probably selling off my shares of Deion Lewis if I could. And as far as a, a, a top 10, top 10 round pick in a I'm startup, saying, yeah. I don't know. I probably I probably would be looking elsewhere. All right, let's keep this free agency discussion moving along. Let's go to to spot one hundred eight in the ADP. Jarek McKinnon set to no longer be a Viking. One hundred eight, maybe similar conversation to be had about him as we just had about Deion Lewis. You guys in? You out on on Jarek McKinnon? I mean, I, I've never been a big McKinnon fan. I've used McKinnon in the last couple of years to make fun of some of those stat guys and those metric guys and stuff like that. But he, he definitely showed really, he, he obviously had his best year this year. And what was interesting, if you're looking at his, at his game log, you got the first four games when Dalvin cook was there, he's got return yards. Dalvin cook gets hurt. He doesn't return another kick in the in for the rest of the year. Sure. So that the, you look at what happens as the season goes long, goes on and, as a team need changes, they had uh, Dalvin Cook, this awesome young star who, the you know, not digress, but the combine told us he wasn't good at football last year. Um, but then weeks five through 12, he's double-digit carries. He's catching the ball all over the place, averaging like five catches a game, getting some touchdowns here and there. And you got the McKinnon people are just the, – the lifer McKinnon group comes to life and it comes back to life. And they just are in an uproar about how great this guy is. But then all of a sudden, 
uh, Latavius Murray looks just shiftier than he ever has in, and skinnier than he ever has in his entire life. So the weeks 13 through 17, McKinnon can't even get 10 carries in the game, but he's still catching balls. So there's a, another twist and turn of events through his season. But I think if you look at about an eight game stretch, McKinnon's getting that 15 carries a game and five catches a game, which is what you would love to have on your fantasy football team right. each and every week. And I like the confidence in the young man. He said he'd rather be a featured back, so he doesn't want to stick around in, in Minnesota. Yeah. Because I mean, I, you know, it's a laughable statement, kind of, but he's only 205 pounds. But like, I like the confidence that he says that, and he knows with Dalvin Cook he's not going to be a featured back. He knows with Dalvin Cook as a rookie, you know, yeah. R- McKinnon had been on the team for a couple years Dalvin Cook shows up. McKinnon's an afterthought. He's just returning to returning kicks, and then Dalvin Cook goes down, and McKinnon comes in and plays very, very well for himself, and probably made himself a couple bucks, no doubt yeah, about it. Definitely made himself some money. Um, I don't think he's a featured back, but he is. He is hard to bring down at two oh five. He runs pretty physical for how he is, and and we all know the reason that everyone likes him is because how quick and fast he is, and he does have good hands. I think he could be a nice, you know, one two punch with somebody and I, I don't I don't don't think I have as much of a problem paying for McKinnon here as I do for Dion Lewis I for whatever agree. reason. I agree. And I would I would have no problem, you know, trying to give uh like a a higher end second round pick to to try to get McKinnon on my team moving forward into next season. Yeah, he is still only twenty five years old, which is pretty impressive. And he's got that ability to pop off big yeah. plays, and he's got a PPR for floor sure. for your pleasure. And he's, you know, I guess you could do a lot worse there at 108. Yeah, that's um, the last pick of the ninth round, so that's not yeah. a terrible investment he, for McKinnon. Just want to throw out there, he was on our cheap money list last year. So if you listen to us, you could have got in when he was super low, and now you got a guy almost in, in the eleventh round of a dynasty pick here. So yeah, that's yeah. what we're looking for. Well, that's what you're looking for the guys who you know, McKinnon was had, had hype. Didn't didn't really perform at all coming into the year and went way down, <laughs> and then this is when you grab him and maybe maybe if you did grab him at that point maybe you're you're the guy who wants to ring the register absolutely and and that's fine too. Well, those first couple games of the season, especially in the short bench leagues like the FFPC, McKinnon was on every every free agency waiver wa- waiver wire, and the guys that made the jump and picked him up when Dalvin Cook went away. That was a great eight-game stretch for him. And then you had to live through the the uh, aggravation of seeing Latavius Murray come to life. And then those guys, Latavius Murray was on the free agency wire. Yeah. And then when he gets out there and starts looking looking good again, the people that were smart enough to pay up a couple bucks for Latavius had a running back going into the end of the year. So it was a tricky situation for the Vikings running backs this year. But McKinnon going forward, like you said, Jay Wayne, in that, that 108 average spot, um, and and you too, Casey. I think I would be a lot more comfortable buying a, a, a McKinnon spot there than a Dion Lewis. Yeah, because I mean, I don't think Dion's really going to be your featured guy anywhere. If, even though I like what Dion does as well, I think I think they're kind of both going to end up maybe in in similar roles. What well, was that? I don't know what that was, but if you look at the if you look at just the stat sheet, just be, like Dion Lewis put on more work in a couple of games stretch than McKinnon did. McKinnon only, you know, he never got 20 carries. The, the, the Patriots loaded Deion Lewis up going into the end of the year. Uh, and so, I mean, again, Deion Lewis, I, I kind of hated on him just a few minutes ago. I'm not sure if he necessarily deserves any of that. And I don't know if Jarek McKinnon is, uh, We none of us here thinks that he's going to step in and be somebody's bell cow 25 carries a game. I don't believe you go from zero to 60 like that. But no. I think McKinnon, in this situation, whoever adds him, it'll be another situation that's very easy to always say, well, whoever pays him wants him the most. Where They had a plan for him. But I I believe McKinnon made enough. And the Vikings have that turf. You know, they're playing in the Dome, and he looked really good this year in some spots. He looked really, really good. So, uh, you know, good for McKinnon. I probably necessarily wouldn't be drafting either one of those two guys here, but if I had to make a pick, I would go McKinnon over Lewis. Well, let's take a quick break. We'll be back. We'll go through to another uh, running back who's in a similar discussion. I'd like to put Isaiah Crowell up against the guys we just kind of talked about. Let's take a quick musical break for your pleasure, and we'll be back with more Married to the Game. All right, well, welcome back. Let's jump right back into it. Let's get into some Isaiah Crowell. He's going to be a free agent. He's going to get out of the Cleveland situation. Uh, He's got an ADP of 112 right now in February, which is a stark contrast of where he was by the end of you know, August ADP last year, he was, you know, anywhere from a late third, fifth kind of round pick, I guess, probably, would you say? Yeah, things were getting a little crazy there. It's pretty the fourth, hot. Fourth, Th- fifth things round. were getting hot and heavy. 
Um, obviously, the Browns had an RB1 in, in, uh, in Duke Johnson last year. I think he finished at RB11. Something like that. Something like that. So, Something you know, awesome it's, like it's that. Pretty, it's pretty Something tough, awesome pretty like tough to have two running backs on your team who finish with, you know, high up accolades for RB value. <laughs> Especially if you're the Browns. Yeah, if, right. If you're not the Saints, it doesn't happen. Um, but he did have a, you know, a decent stretch in the season where you were wondering where that has kind of been all year. Um, in week five and six, he had 8.7 and 9.3. And then things really started to pick up from seven through 11, where he had 11 points, 20 points, 16 points. He falls off a cliff against Jacksonville and has like one point. And then he bounces back uh, for week 11 and 12 and, and kind of goes up and down for the rest of the season. He had two more double digit performances in there. Um, you saw him catch some balls in there. He had three or four catches in, in, you know, maybe four or five of those, those games and 28 total receptions. Yeah. I thought he thought he looked half decent doing that. Um, sure. Well, much more than you thought. Right. Exactly. Especially with Duke out there doing whatever the hell Duke's been doing, whatever he wants. Yeah. yeah. He's been awesome at, at catching the ball, but I guess what I'm getting at here is the owner of Crowell who either drafted him last year at, at the higher end of the uh, of the pool here or has hung on to him for the last couple of years. Either one of those guys is frustrated, I'm sure, by Isaiah Crowell. And I think you could probably obtain, you know, a pretty decent back and you could pounce on the opportunity to get, you know, just add another guy to, to your team. Crowell. Right, go to go him. get Crowell, to add another guy on your team who has a chance to be you know, moderately productive in his in, in his next landing spot. I don't I don't I don't personally think that Crowell is a is a terrible running back. I think he's pretty decent. No, nah, we I just like I said, it was up and down for him. He had stretches where he looked decent. I think if he obviously lands in a favorable landing spot, it's awesome. But even if he doesn't, I think he's could think, can't get any freaking worse. No, him. and I think and I think people are front. <laughs> the owner of Crowell, whether he got him last year or he's had him for a couple of years, is frustrated and will probably sell to you at a, at a at a bit of a discount right and i think i think i agree with that and i think that's a mistake on his part dude's still only 25 like he's still a young guy and he's shown you a, a a ppr kind of flashes here on top of being an awesome first and second down back i mean he's a banger and he's all i, I really like to watch him run and he's he's been okay he hasn't been the worst and then and he's on a team with another rb1 and it's the browns so I, I'd be all about trying. I'll double down. We 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 were even down on taking him last year. We were trying to figure out that weird RB range where it fell it became off. Became okay from the to take him. Crowell, yeah. right? And we were down, and now in and now it's super far down this list. I and, and looking at the ADP at one twelve, there's all kind of tight ends and running backs or, or quarterbacks around this ADP. So if you're not into that at this point in time, I think he'd be a great pick here. I. I Part of me wants to. I think I'd rather have him over McKinnon and probably Deion Lewis. I think. Well, you mentioned the owners of the crew of the. You know, if you got him last year, you've had him for a little while. I think. Um, obviously, hindsight is so twenty twenty. If you had him for two years and you had him last year, August ADP was forty eight, like we were just trying to talking about. So that's why I was lo looking for that real quick. Nice. August August of twenty seventeen, but before the season starts, this guy's at basically at pick on average at pick four twelve in in your drafts to start up. So if you didn't sell him there, you're really pissed off at what happened. So I can understand anybody being upset right now if just you, trying to get something back exactly if that the, the bottom fell out and uh you know just i mean i i feel your pain not on the crowell because i was staying away from crowell last year but i the one thing i said i was going to do is the first guy on my team that scored three touchdowns i was trading away and dang it if the uh the guy gillisley, gillisley did it in week and one i said i said i think i want to trade gillisley, gillisley did it in one. week one and i did not trade him because i needed a second running back and he was really good looking there over side Le'Veon bell and then he just the bottom fell out from him and now he's worthless so if you're the Crowell owner, Crowell's still not worthless because he didn't pull a he didn't pull a Gillisley. He's getting 16 carries for 60 in the middle of the season. He's getting 19 carries for 120 yards and three catches against Green Bay. He did not the wheels didn't fall off of Crowell, but you just did not get the return on your investment in the fourth round of a startup last year. Yeah, and I mean some of it was his fault and, and the team's fault. And but usage wise, it, he was up and down and all around. And well, yeah, I remember plenty of times in the season where you're just 
yelling at the TV, and it's the second quarter, and they Crowell had ten carries in the first quarter, looking decent. Yeah, and then they just stopped giving him the ball, or either or he had a like good four first, for forty, and then, right. then he had a good first half, and then they just didn't give him the ball at all in the second half, which is what happens when you're on the Browns because they're probably getting blown out, so you don't give it to your early down grinder. So mm-hmm. I can the Crowell's just he he was an enigma last year for anybody that paid that fourth round price for him. As far as what Jay Wayne's talking about of what you're going to pay here, I'm looking at if he's at the 112 spot, I know you're talking about the other running backs, but like Marquise Lee's at 115. So I'm going to take Marquise Lee over Crowell. So sure. in this area, well, I'm not don't, buying. You're jumping the gun here a bit. It's well, I'm just saying I'm not buying Crowell. Money on this list is Marquise Lee, but we'll get to I'm him. Not, I and mean, I said it, I wasn't going to buy Deion Lewis or Jared McKinnon either. I will go ahead and pick up Kyle Rudolph in the 106 area. I'm going to invest right there at Kyle Rudolph, and instead of the Crowell, I'm going to buy Marquise Lee. Okay. Just throw it out. Fair enough. Well, Marquise Lee's already gone a long time ago because that's normal and that's where he should have been drafted. And (laughs) Crowell's there and there's no Marquise Lee for you. Look, the guy averaged 4.1 yards per carry. That means he's good. Above four and you're good. (laughs) Below four, you're terrible. But above four, it's okay. Thumbs up. That's how it works, huh? Turn that smile upside down. Yeah. Or frown. Whatever. You get what my point is. I, I I don't know. I'm I'm in I'm in on Crow. I'll I'll take him. There. Me too. Huh? I'll take Marquise Lee for sure. If that's what I'll definitely take Marquise Lee over over Crowell. But no Marquise Lee there because someone knows how good Marquise Lee is and he's gone already. I'll take Crowell. I'm buying him from somebody and I'm purchasing him at the 112 ADP price. So for sure. All right, let's move over to uh, another running back here. ADP 166. We got Rex Burkhead. Mm. What do you guys think of him? He was a integral part of the Patriots plan and parts of the season what do you guys got parts of the season yeah I mean there were stretches when if he was healthy you were starting him and there were stretches where he wasn't healthy and there's going to be some running backs shuffling here in in Patriot land he's actually a free agent he's not signed with them yet but I I think it makes sense that they could bring him back Deion Lewis is probably going to be way too expensive Gillisley's out of there Deion uh James White's still on contract has has some has some nice uh guarantees and stuff so he's definitely going to be there rex if he comes back to the patriots i'm i'm all in and i'm probably in at 166 regardless he seems to just fit into the mold he's he's a he's a a queen on the chessboard you can kind of do whatever you need him to do um and i I think that's that's (laughs) great for the patriots and i think uh you know that's, that's valuable to them, and they, I don't think they're going to have to pay him a ton of money to keep him around. Well, I doubted the, fec- the effectiveness of Danny Woodhead when he left the Patriots, and he went over there and had an absolutely tear with the Chargers for a little while. So I, I, I would say that, the, the, like you said, the chess board with the way the Patriots use their running backs, I think that Rex Burkhead fit right in there perfectly. He was nicked up to start the season, and the first four games, first couple games of the season with Gillisley in there and James White and Deion Lewis, they didn't know what in the world would they were doing with those running backs. They were all over the place. Uh, actually dropped a couple, get, dropped two out of the first four games for the Patriots, which is unheard of. And uh, they just were, it was just, you couldn't plug in any of them after the you know, first three touchdowns of the year in one game with Gillisley. But I think the you know weeks 12, 13, 14, 15 or something like that for Burkhead, it was touched running. He was running the ball into the end zone. He was catching the ball, taking it in the end zone. And he was absolutely just a great RB2 to just plug into your lineup and if he comes like like Jay Wayne said, if he comes back to the Patriots, you know what you can expect from him, from them. You, the, that's how they want to use him. But I think that last year they got a little bit greedy, picking up cheap backs, and they had their different roles with what they thought Gillisley was going to do. And he ended up being a healthy scratch the second half of the year, all the way through. If Which I, well, real quick, I, I'm gonna need that. a little less cloudy. I did. I, you, I was looking at contracts and stuff, and Gillisley has, gets like thirty-one thousand dollars a game that he's active for. Yeah, that how crazy. So them boys were just like, "Nah, we're not gonna give him that thirty thousand for this game. Yeah. Nah, we're not gonna give him that thirty thousand for so this." So mean. Game. But if, so if mean. Rex comes back to the Patriots, I'm all in on on the one sixty six here. I think he he's a nice nice piece for you. And like you said, if he doesn't. I'm I'm kind of fifty fifty. He made an appearance on Cheap Money last year, I believe. Sure. And I th- I think he is a good player. He if if he's healthy, I think he can help pretty much any franchise. I think he called him a battering ram on Cheap Money last yeah. year. Yeah, it was hilarious. <laughs> Gotta let Rex ride. <laughs> Gotta let Rex ride. Let the you see what happens when you let him ride. Right. Great great name. Got to take him in the first round of a name draft. Yeah, for sure. He has great success. Let's go to break, and we'll be back with some more free agency for your pleasure. You know what I really love about our logo? It's got that bluish hue to it. It's really good. 
<laughs> Check it out. Check it out on Twitter if you haven't seen it, at the FF Dynasty. Make Let's, sure you hit subscribe on YouTube, too. Yeah. Give us a subscribe so you don't got to go look and just, it, it'll just give you a notification when we drop pops some new up. stuff. Yeah. yeah. The, the bluish hue FF Dynasty just uploaded a video for your pleasure. Boom. Well, a guy who's got some, you at least used to have some bluish hue to him. <laughs> Old Arlene's Darkwa. He's a free agent. He's going to get out from, from New York here, most likely. He's got an ADP of 273. He was a guy, like Big Co kind of mentioned, a Jarek McKinnon. He was a, uh, a spark guy, I think, and all the metric guys really liked Darkwa. And I, I, I had been critical of him, you know, a couple of times where people are like, oh, Darkwa, Darkwa, Darkwa. And I was like, yeah, this guy's really never done anything. And this year, man, I got to say, I, I, I liked what I saw from him. He had seven double digit fantasy production uh, weeks here. Uh, one of those was 9.9. .9, so I counted that. So don't right. come back and be like, well, there's only six. <laughs> um, he had a couple of dudes in there in the beginning of the season, Paul Perkins being one of them, and Wayne Gallman eventually ate into some of his games, but he finished the season strong in Week 17 with 21 fantasy points. Um, he missed Week 4 with a back injury and exited Week 5 against the Chargers with a calf injury, but he was having a solid game there, eight carries for 72 yards. I think this guy's got the parts and pieces to be a decent NFL player and, and can definitely contribute for your team. And at, at 273, I think that's just a a free stab at a guy who has shown to be productive. I mean, what were the Giants offense? What, what was anybody doing in the Giants offense last year? Like all the receivers got hurt. The offensive line was terrible. Eli couldn't do anything. Darko came in and, and was really a bright spot and in, in, in what they had going on. And was very startable for you a lot of the times. I mean, he's, he's a pretty physical runner. It's pretty decent to watch. And I think he looks thick, but not fat. And yeah, I think uh, I'm definitely intrigued at 273 for sure. I mean, well, you got to go up this ADP list to see a decent ways, like 20 spots, and then you hit Doug Doug Martin, and you're like, okay, well, I guess I take Doug Martin over or Orleans here, but like, I got to go up a ways to find a guy I want more than it's due to 273. So. Yeah, I mean, 273. I mean, that's that's a heck of a number. We were just talking about guys at 173. That's the, that's like where Rex Burkhead was right. last year. Yeah, exactly. So at 273, you're in the 23rd round in a 12 man draft before he's on. He's coming around. So it, that's that's the key here for me. I mean, I I can talk dark dark well all day long at 273. It's they, like you said. Everybody knows that the the Giants just fell apart offensively last year, and then when Odell was hurt. First four or five games of the season, Darko was nowhere to be seen. He had eight carries or whatever in one game, but then he kind of Paul Perkins gets hurt. Then, then, then the then the offense was like, all right, well let's let let's just go out there. We're, they're going to Denver. I remember it like it was yesterday. They they were a big underdog. They were going to Denver. Denver's passing defense is ridiculously good. The Giants just lost all their receivers the week before. They had nobody. That, and they go to Denver and win the game just running it, just pounding it down their throats. And Denver was just completely caught off guard. And the uh, Giants changed their offense overnight. Of course, the next week he, they play against Seattle. And the Seattle's like, well, we can show you. And he goes nine for 35. But then, like Jay Wayne said, a couple weeks in a row, he's startable. Uh, me and Casey had a league where we started him a couple weeks and it was not terrible. And there's, um, you know, there's a lot to, there's a lot to like, and if to pay $0 for a guy like dark will right this minute. He, and, and the thing about these running backs are most of the time it's dependent on what's going on with the team, if they have success or not. Almost all the time that like a dark will could go, you could go plug dark will into a team that's a smash mouth team and they're going to be there because of the offensive line of road graders or they got the play action pass going or they got a good defense and that's what they're going to do. Like the giants were the like dumpster fire of the league last year. They got Eli Manning's. They benched him for a game to right. put in Geno Smith or they just, the Giants. Well, that was Ben, Mac ben McAdoo trying to solidify his right, legacy as like, a douchebag. Right? <laughs> yeah. Ending Eli Manning's star streak. So, I mean, the, just the other than Evan Ingram and Sterling Shepard showing how awesome they were last year, like the nothing went right for yeah. the Giants at all. So for the limited success that Darkwood did have, we're not nobody's on here telling you he he's awesome, but to to do what he did uh, in those I mean I was kind of telling you that he was kind of awesome. He had some really good games on a shit team. It, he did. He did have some good games on a terrible team and so I mean I think at 273 you could do a heck of a lot worse than grabbing Darkwell on your team. I'm I'm putting all sorts of feelers out to to try to 
trade for Darko in this offseason right now, especially before he changes teams and maybe makes a headline? Like, what if he goes? What if he goes somewhere like the Tennessee Titans? Demarco's probably out of there. They got Derrick Henry. They clearly don't want to give Derrick Henry. That's cl- like it's clear to me that they're not trying to give Derrick Henry like just the sole featured role right. where they're just running him out there every week. And I'm, maybe, I'm not saying that if they did pick up Orlean Stark, where they wouldn't maybe draft somebody else and he would be the guy, but it's worth a shot to me. If And clearly at 273, a six, the, the people's uh, value is spoken to say that nobody values this guy. Let me see if I can go pick him up for peanuts in a trade. Peanuts. I mean, you you could probably trade him, trade him. Or you could offer nothing and maybe get him back. Right. You know, hey, I'll give you I'll give you a, an open roster spot if yeah. you give me dark one. Sure. Like I I'm not I literally won't even give you anything for him, but I will let you give him to me. Give you a 6 and, and a 7. Right. And you, you might be able to here. get dark one. Yeah. But in that hypothetical though, like you said, like that was exactly what I meant is that's a perfect team to just pick out of thin air, Casey. Like if he if he goes to the Titans and Derrick Henry gets hurt, like there's they got they got they're changing philosophies on offense because they had terrible play calling last year. They're bringing in new coaching staff, but you got Mariota and some young stud wide receivers running around. You got Delaney Walker and John New Smith. You got options and somebody like Darkwa. If Der- if Derrick Henry were to go down and the hypothetical were to play itself out, and Dark was on the Titans, Darkwa could be in a great yeah. running back for zero dollars invested. Right, and I'm not even saying like I don't even I don't. I'm saying like you, maybe you might not even need an injury. Maybe they invest in a, in a back late round, but they want Darkwa in there spelling Derrick Henry and, and maybe could be useful for you during the season, even if Henry isn't hurt. Like that's just just kind of those. And if he did get hurt, I mean, look out. He, he, he did fine with a terrible offense last year and yeah. with this awesome offensive line and maybe a new philosophy on offense for the Titans. I, just obviously, it's a ton of speculation here, but Tons. just kind of saying... You know, but that's the kind of thing right. that could make a 273rd pick in an average draft position pick a that's, player very valuable. This is how you win. It's cheap money, man. This is cheap, cheap money. All right, well let's uh, let's keep rolling. Let's move on to some wide receivers here in free agency. Oh well, before we go there, real quick, we got Charles Sims True. on the running back uh, train and Terrence West on the running back train who neither one of them have ADPs listed. Don't even have a number. And again, I don't want to keep using this analogy, but let's say Charles Sims goes to the Titans. Like, that's a perfect complimentary piece to what Derrick Henry does in his game. And I, I like Charles Sims' pass-catching ability just fine. I think he's an awesome pass-catching back. Do you th- and he's going to change places and, and get a fresh, fresh new place, fresh face, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that Charles Sims catches the ball l- less aggressively than he did two years ago when he was a really good PPR back? No. Exactly. He might have got hurt, and the Tampa Bay situation has been a little crazy. Doug Martin on and off, Adderall, like who knows what's going on over there. Charles Sims got hurt. Uh, Charles Sims played good for a couple of games, and all of a sudden, two years ago, coming into the league, t- going into the league year, he was being a d- he was a top ten round draft pick. If you're on Player Profiler, you type in Dark was named Charles Sims pops up. Whoa! So, <laughs> I'm just the, the the ADP is not listed on those guys. He's about to be a free agent. He's going to change teams and maybe get an opportunity. And and Terrence West, I mean. He's not listed, and if he, if he can get an opportunity somewhere to be a to to be a first or second down back, he hadn't disappointed when he's had his chances for the most part. And he can catch a little bit. There's there's unless you play in a super super deep league, both of these guys will be in your free agent rookie draft. Unless he's on one of those teams where the player the guy stopped playing last year and didn't drop anybody because he right. stopped caring. Sure. So ninety nine percent chance Charles Sims and Terrence West, excuse me, are going to be in your free agent rookie draft. And so when all the promising potential rookies are gone and nobody knows who to take you could grab charles sims and put him on your bench and just see what happens right there's no i, I think that both of those guys have had success in the league and yeah. there's no reason for you not to try to put them well, on the bottom of your roster just to try to you know yeah, electrify not, the bottom end of that bench it's not going to cost you anything and they're guys who have been successful in the league right it's not like they haven't looked good at spots since it's, it's been injury and, and situation it's yeah, I'll add Not one more to the list. Damian Williams is at ADP 289. He's probably going to change teams. He had some spots where he's looked good. I like Drake over him, but still, Damian Williams, again, these are these are guys that can help you out who have had success in the league that you, know, you should be looking to maybe if you wanted to add a little depth on the bottom of your team with somebody with upside, I think all three of those guys are, are interesting. Absolutely. Agreed. Zero dollars invested. Cheap money. Let's get on to the wide receiver side of things here. Oh, let do it. <laughs> that means, oh, let's do it, I think. is mm. It's All a right. song. All right, oh, let's, do it. let's start off with one, oh, of, me and, <laughs> one of me and Big Coast's <laughs> favorite guys who 
has habitually not gotten respect and certainly isn't getting any more respect this year. Jordan Matthews coming in at 155. I know there's no chance that I'm off of this guy. There's no way that you're off of this guy. I think he just needs a chance, and he's probably going to get his chance here to go somewhere else and, and do something. I think he's a good player if he can if he can get his slot roll back. Well, there's not many places that wide receivers go to die worse than Buffalo. Okay, This is true. So for Sammy Watkins to take out, and, George, and, and my boy Bobby Woods leaves Buffalo last year, the last person I wanted to see go in there and fill those voids of not getting the ball thrown to him is my boy Jordan Matthews. Like he could have gone anywhere else. I mean, you know, he's nicked up and hurt anyway, so it really didn't matter. But come well, that's on, the man. issue here. Not to Buffalo. So I don't like, think the issue is anywhere he is. If is, oh, the can he get is on buff- the, the freaking field? Buffalo. Can he get on the field and stay on the field? At one fifty five, gimme him because yeah, me too, if, all day long. If the resurgence that Jordan Matthews could have when if he's back on the field and healthy, he is a six foot three NFL wide receiver. He is a he he slot wide receiver. Whatever. That slot wide receiver means catches and six foot three. I don't means really care. I was catches. Just, I don't, I don't, I don't really care. care. It doesn't matter if he's slot or not to me. It, I'm I'm taking Jordan Matthews at one fifty five. And and, I, I, and most of these guys we've been talking about, I look around and pick somebody else. I can pick them out of the and and you know within five or six picks up or down and say, oh, I'd rather have this guy. But at one fifty five, give me Jordan Matthews. Yeah, me too. He's he's a guy who will probably be on a lot of my teams in startups this year and what have you just got to be lose? hanging around. That's what I'm saying. I, we've seen him be really productive. He's he's put up some of the better numbers early on in a season than anyone ever, yeah. I'm pretty sure. And I'll, I'll take that all the day. He's just going to be hanging around. He's got no respect. Nobody wants anything to do with him. I'll, I'll give me he'll, He's going to be a guy who ends up on my roster a, more times than not in a, in a startup. Absolutely. Can't really argue with it. I mean, he, you've seen him be really good and – Guys can get healthy. We just saw Keenan Allen get healthy. Like guys can get over. Marvin Jones it is just Marvin them. Jones just went sixteen games and became a wide receiver one. I mean, like he well, he, he had like one thing wrong. It's just a foot all the time with Marvin Jones. But uh, he was hurt and he got hardly any respect. And Jordan Matthews has got more of a Keenan but like, Allen spread of. But like Casey was saying, like in the first two years of injuries on in, his in his first two seasons, it was Amari Cooper had caught the ball more than him in his first two years in the league, and then and then um. Uh, Odell came through and did it. So I mean, there's been a lot of young rookies catching balls lately. But Jordan Matthews, he it wasn't a high octane Chip Kelly offense in in Philly, but he had to run routes and he had to catch the ball, and he was crushing it. And he'd just been nicked up lately, and Buffalo didn't help out anything. So I mean, to at me, at 155, it's worth it. At this to point, me, for sure. that's like with you. that's like a Christmas present, man. At 155, it could be absolutely awesome. And if you whiff on it, I mean, you could also take you know theoretic right there and and not be able to plug him in all year long. Right so, until something somebody it, goes until down. Until somebody gets hurt in front Especially of him. Especially if they sign Deion Lewis. Yeah, I mean, yeah. four spots behind him is Muhammad Sanu. I mean, I love Sanu as a gamer, and he's a great player for the Falcons. But unless Julio Jones gets hurt, Sanu's unstartable every single week. Uh, he was he was usable. He was year. usable sometimes was, at home. He was a home home field insert. But he wasn't a sexy play by any means. But if you needed a dude hold down your your spot for a second, you could use Sanu. He, there's he nobody, gets totally there's nobody like guys that like Ma- Muhammad Sanu that I like playing against worse on a week to week basis when you're playing the guy and you're he like always he plugs scores in, ah, he yeah. plugs in Sanu and you're like you're in the back yeah. of your mind you're like yeah he plugged in Sanu but then it's like every time somebody plays a guy like that against me he burns me he I thought you meant if you punch him and he throws a yeah. touchdown yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant if you were a defender this is a guy because he's such a lunch pat lunch pat lunch pail and hard hat guy <laughs> no no so, I don't want to guard Sanu yeah <laughs> no but let's let's Keep it rolling on the receivers. You got Paul Richardson at 156, so one slot behind Jordan Matthews. This is Casey's boy. I will take Paul Richardson over Jordan Matthews every day of the week here, I think. I'm I'm okay with either guy you want to give me. I think Paul Richardson's a, a, a pretty electric player. He also can get nicked up from time to time, but he he had a pretty pretty good pretty good year and he's gonna go somewhere else and, and hopefully get a chance to get more volume his way, and he's he's also a big play guy. On top of that, what I love about him is the effort. Is yeah, it's it's the nonstop effort from Paul Richardson. I love Paul Richardson's his his spectacular catch rate on Madden must be ninety nine. <laughs> like he, you know, he's <laughs> this dude will catch a ball that looks like it's absolutely uncatchable, and you, I love that. I love I love it when you see a ball thrown up, and it's like that dude ain't catching that ball, and he brings it in time and time again. So. I like Paul Richardson too. These are two guys right here, one fifty five, one fifty six, who are just begging to be on your team next startup. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm all in on some Paul Richardson. I got an offer to trade Paul to trade 
Gerald Everett for Paul Richardson. How do you guys feel about that? Um, I mean, I think for the cachet that Gerald Everett in the hard to find position non, that tight non, end is non premium, still non non pre. I still, I would, I would hold out for more. Do you have I, another tight end? I feel like you could give less yeah. than that and get Paul. Richardson. I got Johnny Smith hanging like out on. If I'm, if we're talking other young tight ends, I feel like you got to keep John, Gerald Everett. But I yeah. feel like you could get. I wouldn't be mad at you for going and getting Paul Richardson. With I'm Gerald not going to be Everett, mad at though. you for getting Paul Richardson, but I feel like you could get him for cheaper than Gerald Everett. Yeah, even though Gerald possible. Everett's farther down on this list. And if NFL doc, or an NFL yeah, Network was replaying the uh, the Texans Seahawks game, I was just you know Deshaun was playing, so I watched it for a minute, and I'm like, who is this? Like right off the rip, the Seahawks have the ball, and I'm like, who is this? Who's this big dude on the wide playing wide receiver? Paul Richardson. I didn't know he like looked big out there. He looked tall. Yeah, he's, he's like only six he's six foot, like yeah. one hundred and eighty pounds. But. I know, but he looked he looked big out there. He's playing physical, made some awesome plays. All Pauly. All right, well let's <laughs> Pauly. Let's let's keep it moving and get to the elephant in the wide receiver room of free agents. <laughs> Terrell yeah. Pryor sitting at 190. Woo-wee. You know, there's no chance that me and Big Co aren't all in on taking another shot on on Paul on uh yeah Paul Richardson on <laughs> Terrell on Terrell Pryor. Pryor at 190. If you're going to give him to me again, I'll take a chance on on Big Old Pryor who had a nice season with the Browns. They're talking about maybe he's possibly coming back to the Browns, which well, oh anywhere but wouldn't that. be fa- yeah it wouldn't be favorable for me. That's not cool. That's the only way that I'm. I want to let Jay Wayne have his due before I get going on prior. But if he goes to the Browns, that's not cool. With Corey, Corey Coleman and and Josh Gordon, the Browns aren't going to all of a sudden get a unless they do like go for somehow some reason win. Yeah, maybe Cousins. that's the way you get Kirk if you have. Get These another, three monsters on uh, the outside. Yeah, if the Browns have a rookie quarterback, it's going to be. I mean, there's no way that all three of those guys can be consistent. They might be boom or bust every single week or something like that. Or either Josh Gordon's just so good, he's like, you better throw me the ball. And I just, I would be out on Pryor if he goes to the Browns. I wouldn't be out on him at pick 190. I'm taking him at pick 190, no matter where he goes. Yeah, but. that's. I think the bottom line here for me is 190. Let me get this physical freak. I mean, I'm just glad that they did have. He had like an injury last year that you could pin and say, "Look, this is why, this could be why he was so bad." Well, not his foot only injury that he, landed him on IR, and he maybe did have give a, him a little bit of a break here. He did have an injury, but not only that, I did not, I did discount too much the turnover that the Redskins went through in the wide receiver room. The the way they started the the year off, they had a really good defense, and they really didn't know what was going on. Offensively. A healthy offensive line. They were and, trying to run the ball, and I mean, they were the first four games of the season everything went through chris thompson and the tight ends i mean even and, jameson crowder's getting and dropped ryan, ryan grant just and ryan being, grant being the guy that defenses didn't pay any attention to because there's terrell Pryor and jameson crowder who the fantasy football community loved last year and ryan grant's just scoring touchdowns from 50 yards out and it's just a it was just a rough combination of things that led to just awfulness for the redskins offense if you were specific players which was for the most part, for wins it, and losses, it started off good for them when they were all healthy, doing what they yeah, were doing. Yeah, but it wasn't but, good on the fantasy football field no. for Pryor and and um, uh, the other guy, was Crowder. Crowder. So it was it was absolutely horrible for both of those guys. But go back and just back up twelve months, okay? Pryor's coming off a, a ridiculously good season with the Browns, no less. And before that, he had one career catch. So let let me, let's just put it back in perspective. Did I was I a little aggressive on my prior love last year? Absolutely. Did I discount the fact that he changed teams to a new quarterback and that might not have been anything better? I was like, how do you get how you left the Browns and you went to Kirk Cousins? It has to be magic, and, and you, it and, wasn't magic. And you lost, you know, who you lost the the Rams head coach, but you lost one of the best coordinators in the game. And you could say what you want, but coaching and scheme matters there is there is no way that you don't lose the guy that goes over there and turns the rams around from being just a a a eight and eight team to they get the offensive player of the year jared Goff's all of a sudden not a bust you know what i mean robert woods is out there looking good cooper cups getting open sammy watkins is scoring touchdowns like the rams offense and it was absolutely amazing well, traded todd Gurley what, though yeah exactly <laughs> and todd Gurley's just just the best running back in fantasy football so that you lost that and so now you lost that and you lost all your other wide receivers so now you got this huge turnover you got a new coach and st- you know new offensive coordinator so things just weren't and i mean to go back to it go it's not like they didn't plan on having a great year with prior to first game of the season first snap first time Kirk cousins touched the ball from under center he throws it 50 yards to prior and it just was incomplete like 
at one ninety prior, I still prior's going to be one of the best values to me all year long with this because the bottom fell out. He just dropped one hundred and fifty spots. But yeah, and people I'm are definitely him. bitter as shit about so it. So bitter. Give me prior all day long for this price. Obviously, I wouldn't go taking him in the third round of a startup like I wanted to last year. But things happen and. Things go absolutely bonkers one year, and the next year you're right. Look at, I mean, there's plenty of examples where I could call out, but like, I mean, one career catch the year before, he had a really good year, and then he had a bad year. But prior, he's, I mean, at 190, give me him. Load it up. Every team I got, every yeah. startup I got, it, I mean, 190, what is that, like tw- 15th, 16th round? I mean, oh, give me, I'll, I'll, well, I, we started it off, and I'll end it. I'll, I'll put him on every one of my teams too at one ninety. Nope, no problem at all. That's fifteen point eight one ninety divided by twelve. So somewhere in the middle of the fifteenth round, you can bet Pryor's going to be on my team. I mean, you can again if if if, if this ADP is this low, somebody's upset that they drafted Pryor. I mean, I'm probably if I drafted him last year where I had to draft him, I'm probably not going to give him up. I'm probably going to hang on for another. You got to wait. Maybe if somebody's super bitter, I'd throw throw some peanuts at him and see what comes back. I saw Pryor get traded for a third rounder recently in the in the FFPC, and probably guy needed to get under the 16 cut coming up. Um, I thought that was a, a really good pickup for the guy that gave the third rounder for him. I mean, I, th- I don't think you're losing anything there. Yeah. Yeah, and to close it up on Pryor here, I mean, we're sitting here at February 25th. He's 190. Like. If he goes to the Browns, I just we all just said that's not a great sp- spot because they don't have a quarterback and they got a couple other good receivers that could demand some targets. But let's say what potentially Allen Robinson gets tagged by the Jags here and he stays around in Jacksonville and maybe just you know everybody a lot of people want to see Allen Robinson jump over there and be with Jimmy G in San Fran. What if Terrell Pryor goes to San Francisco and all of a sudden that huge tidal wave of Jimmy G love engulfs yeah. a little bit of Pryor? Pryor could go from 190 to 90 overnight if if Pryor goes to somebody with a that needs a wide receiver like San Fran. He could you, you could pick him up here in the end of February and overnight he could jump 10 rounds in value for you. Yeah, for sure. I mean San Francisco strikes out with a couple of free agents and doesn't yeah. get them, and then they just you're going to bring in a big, kind of bigger bodied guy to to. They don't have one of those right now, and and you probably get prior for for kind of cheap. They they'll probably draft a wide receiver, but we're going through those guys right now, and I don't really love any of these wide receivers. Right. So. Well, I, I mean, obviously, like San Fran needs a wide receiver, but I picked that spot just to mention sure, yeah. because of the love how, how of quick, Jimmy G. Right. You know the, what I mean? This the scheme and the coach and the quarterback and all that. How quickly. The value could turn around. Yep, right. On so that, go and so. try and maybe pounce sooner than later. Yeah, you could probably get Pryor for a fourth round pick right now. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Well, we'll put a bow on Pryor for now, and I'm just going to go over another two or three guys here that are that are potential free agents this year that we'll have a quick discussion. I'll start with Dante Moncrief. Okay. A potential potential uh, team changer here. What do you guys think? Well, I mean, it's. I was I I was kind of in the back of my mind expecting him to stay in Indy. Um, I obviously my boy Andrew Luck is up to throwing weighted footballs. Uh, <laughs> you know, if I can get Andrew Luck back in there, I got a couple of teams where I got Moncrief just right into pine. Bro. A lot of people do. Yeah, don't well everybody does. Yeah. If you, every every Dante Moncrief owner has been watching that man ride the pine for the last twelve months, and it's been pretty terrible. So. If I got Moncrief, I'm really not going to sell because you can't get anything. I actually just purchased Moncrief for peanuts. I got him for a fourth round pick, and I just I would be into that mode because it all it won't take Mary. It, it all it would take is Andrew Luck coming back and Moncrief to have a couple of games to be Moncrief again. I don't think Moncrief or, or is wherever un, he goes. I don't think he's unrecoverable at all. I don't think he did necessarily anything to be. I mean, Jacoby Brissett came in and stabilized the sinking ship last right. year, but it was Jacoby Brissett who has n- is not a prolific passer and uh, did all he could do throwing it to Jack Doyle and t- and Pepper and T.Y. T- Hilton sometimes. But, you know, it just wasn't – and it, ha- it was not Moncrief's year, and I would not be selling him for peanuts. I'd be buying him for peanuts. Sure. That's, you know? that's the name of the game. You're trying to find – guys who could turn around and value pretty pretty quickly and like we've talked about with some other guys there's he's you've at least seen him i don't know how well you've seen him play but you've seen him score touchdowns in the league yeah kid, this, i mean uh, it's not your i know moncrief's not your favorite player I, I did pick him up on a team that we share together for the fourth rounder and you're like why'd you do that and i was like all right i got my bad i thought you'd be happy i didn't realize you didn't like him so much well, no here here's the problem with that <laughs> is that you didn't you didn't you didn't 
acknowledge the fact that you were going to pick him up. I, my thing is, is I don't have to like a player to see the value in a player. I think it's a great pickup. You just didn't communicate with me that you were picking him up. Yeah, and that's that's well, I really didn't think the that problem. he was going to take the take. He, I really didn't think he was going to take the trip. So I gotta get you. I can't just not give you a hard time about it. It's like a dog. You gotta smack the dog and let him know <laughs> that he did something wrong. Right. But I'm 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 totally. I mean, giving up a fourth rounder for a guy who if comes back and let's say he's he resigns was, with the Colts for a team friendly deal or whatever and comes back and scores 10 touchdowns again like he did one season you know you're ringing the register immediately plus we also like to talk about guys he comes in and has two great games in in 2018 here and you could ring the register again absolutely. for him all, all the above obviously he's not 23 years old anymore but he was only two years ago where he was a third round startup pick so yeah and and you what you just said a minute ago was that's the name of the game and like we talked about with Pryor at 190 and we're talking about dante moncrief right here who's absolutely just bottoms falling out warren buffett told me when nobody else oh, wants it, warren buffett knowledge when, drops here when no when he told me he, i got a cell phone number he told me <laughs> specifically he said when nobody else wants it that's the time to buy it well that's the time you want to go buy that's the time you, that's a little that was a little bit of a jerry jones uh mixture there with warren buffett but he told me specifically sent me a card handwritten letter he said when nobody else wants it that's the time to buy it and nobody wants moncrief and nobody wants prior so the time to buy it is now and it can only go up from here yeah well, and then an another guy that maybe falls into that category is is a Bryce Butler. He's a, he's a little older and a little longer in the tooth here, but for some reason the Cowboys have shunned him and let Terrence Williams run the show over there. When I think clearly Bryce Butler's been the more talented player, I he's agree. finally going to get maybe his chance to go somewhere else. But Bryce, nobody's ever paid any money for Bryce Butler, right. so there's nobody out there with hard feelings toward Bryce Butler. Maybe you thought he was going to be a star last year and didn't get his chance, but you didn't pay any kind of price for right. him. Yeah, but, but I think but I think this is a, a, another guy to pay attention to in the offseason, see where he lands. Maybe he's going to get an opportunity to absolutely to, to maybe shine and break out a little bit. Um, and a, another guy on this list that I uh, think is kind of interesting is old old Bruce Ellington, Bruce. Old, old old friend of mine over at uh, San Francisco. We drafted him; it didn't really work out. <laughs> Took him to Can't the dance. Stay healthy. Didn't yeah. go home to dance. Yeah, home together. He didn't stay healthy with the Niners. Eventually, they moved on. He went to the Texans, and when he was in his fill-in duty at the beginning of the season, he played great. I think he's he's got good metrics, and <laughs> he he's a quick guy. He can play he can play the slot for somebody. I think he's he's a really interesting uh, just broad shoulders bargain big bargain basement just floating around for, for no AD, absolutely nothing no adp on bruce ellington that's and some I, cheap money i there. think he has shown some some decent plays if we really want to talk about somebody super cheap oh, he, i mean agent. just as re, i mean just this past year he had a couple of really good games when that's Will what i'm Fuller saying right in the beginning lineup. of the season when when, when, when they Will needed Fuller him wasn't there he had a couple of really really solid games and he definitely he plays that role of i can catch a lot of passes over the middle if you need me to and i can make a big he'll go down the field and jump up and catch a ball you don't think he's going to catch michael campanero is also a free agent this year bummer he got kind of hurt at the end of the season so He's kind of interesting. Jeff Janis, finally a free agent. He's, he's out. See what's going on with him. Um, and then Jerome Brown also is, I guess, you know, moderately interesting as a free agent. Probably going to go somewhere else outside of Arizona. So just I thought I saw some flashes out of Jerome Brown. He definitely is, he plays a little bigger than he looks. And I thought he didn't. I mean, he's not a great football player, I don't think. But he could. He just, I mean, look, look at like, look at what Robert Woods did. Okay. And, and not to say that it's been as bad in Arizona, but, you know, obviously they Carson Palmer has been there when he's been healthy and it's been better. But like post when Carson Palmer hasn't been healthy, the only person that can catch a pass Larry. around there is Larry. OK, yeah. Robert Woods leaves the wide receiver death land to Buffalo <laughs> and he goes over to L.A. and all of a sudden he's freaking awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? So all these guys you just and mentioned, you had seen some some flashes out of Robert Woods. You just had yeah, got when, a chance. When, but you when also Sammy saw some, was out of lineup. Yeah. They, Robert Woods filled in as a sure. WR1 there for, for, for and, Buffalo and two years ago. And you saw Jerron Brown filling in when John Brown, who's also a free agent, kind of went out, and you saw some flashes when from When Carson Palmer was healthy throwing the ball, Jerron Brown didn't look terrible. So these are guys that are just absolutely free. Yeah. Well, well, going into the season last year, we, we put it on the podcast. Somebody even hit us up about it and said, hey, man, I think that was the league I'm in. We took Robert Woods in the last pick of the la of the at 2012, the last pick of the draft in the FFPC league. We took him, and he ended up being awesome. Yeah. Of course, we dropped him because we were picking up ASJ, Austin Severian Jenkins, and things didn't work out. But 
the idea there was the same. Like we were like, hey, this guy could be one of the guys that flares and yeah, and, and comes out at flashes, and and he did. Yeah, I mean, John Brown's going to get the same kind of treatment. He's people have been loving him, loving him, loving him. He can't stay healthy. Got the sickle cell thing, but definitely worth a flyer. Absolutely. So absolutely, I think that's going to wrap up uh, some some free agent uh, kind of value talk here it's free agent value uh adp discrepancy talking at just that last year we did this show the first guy we talked about was andre ellington and that literally probably made some people laugh at the time and it would probably make you laugh again now but the, what we said at the time was andre ellington could be a guy that could bridge the gap for you for a couple of weeks and keep you on pace to a championship and i just want to bring this up because as i listened to the show this week that we did last year just to kind of get me my mind wrapped around what we were doing today and it made me laugh because like that's specifically exactly what happened last year obviously you know john um they traded for adrian peterson adrian peterson comes in and that and but there was a four or five weeks there where andre ellington was getting over 10 targets a game there wasn't another ppr back that you wanted to plug in your lineup for I, for a minute there, there. was a, it was only like three or four weeks but we plugged it we had one team where we got no wide receivers and that team went on to win the championship in the ffpc and andre ellington we picked him up off the waiver wire had him on our bench Get, all of a sudden, got 11 getting, targets. All of a sudden, he got 11 targets. We plugged him in the next week. We rode him three weeks in a row. He gets us 20 PPR points. And then the fourth week, he gets zero target. He gets zero. And we took him back out and dropped him. But like for three weeks in a row, he got us 20 points. You know, that's three all. Weeks just in a, row, a he shooting put us star. Over the top. Shooting star. And these there's guys in, on this list here that will be an integral part of somebody's championship team next year. You're just not exactly sure who it's going to be. So yeah, you and, look and around. when you're in that moment, you might not be saying, oh, this is this was part of my championship run, but right. it, it helped you absolutely secure a win week in, week out throughout the season absolutely. out of an unlikely candidate is kind of what you're trying to do here. Absolutely. So you want to bring us home? Get out of here? We doing it? Yeah. I'll we doing it. this? Welp. See you later. Nah, just kidding. Make sure you hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. We have our own individual handles at IMC Myers, at Dynasty Big Co, at Jay Wayne's World. Go on your platform of choice. Hit subscribe, iTunes, Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio. Please hit us up with a five star review on iTunes. All you got to do is click the little five stars. Write something if you feel so inclined. It drastically helps us out. Go on to YouTube, hit subscribe, check out the videos we're putting out there. Pretty cool. Thanks for joining us, everyone, today. You've been listening to the FF Dynasties. Married to the game.